Oh, hey, I didn't uh, hear you even click in there. I'm just dusting off some of my uh, Star Wars junk or action figures and stuff. You know, as a toy collector, you gotta keep this stuff dust free. Now, if you go anywhere else in my house, you'll see probably dust about that thick. But when it comes to my Star Wars stuff, come on, we don't wanna put junk, we don't wanna put dust on it. Anyway, since you're here, I guess I'll talk to you about something since you just came on into my junk room and barged in. Didn't let me know you were coming. It's not Action Figure Monday. It's not News Friday. It's just middle of the week, so what do you want to talk about? Well, you know, a lot of people ask me, they say, hey, Junkman, what do you like about the Phantom? What do you like about movie fans? What do you like about Star Wars fans? And yes, I could spend hours on hours telling you what I love about you guys. But that's no fun. Who wants to sit here and watch a video of me kissing ass out there and trying to get more subscribers? It's better if I turn out to piss you off and get some thumbs downs and make you not subscribe, right? So I'm gonna give you 10 things, not in any kind of real order, 10 things I hate about the Phantom. And not just Star Wars fandom. Uh, in fact, I usually hate that word kind of fandom. I don't really, I don't really like saying it. You know, I kind of cringe when I say it, but this is just 10 things that kind of annoy me about the Phantom. And not, again, not just Star Wars Phantom, but movie Phantom, geek Phantom, and all that stuff, so. Start the intro and I'll be right back. First up, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably know this one already. I hate shipping people. And I not see this just in Star Wars with Kylo and Rey, although I don't see any reason at all to ship them together. They're not in love. And where did all this ship stuff start? Well, I didn't even know about it until people started telling me about Kylo Ren and Rey getting together and Raylo, whatever they call it. So I've done some digging and it seems like this really started in the Phantom, well really big in the Phantom, for Twilight. That's right. People that, Twilight fans, you know those 13, 14 year old girls that love Twilight? That's where it started. They would ship Edward and, I don't know, that other guy. And they would ship, you know, the vampire and the wolf. I never saw Twilight. Twilight. Maybe you did. But that's where it all started. As Star Wars fans, do we have to bring Twilight speech over into Star Wars? Please, on never say Relo or shipping somebody together. We're not 13-year-old girls. Now, if you're a 13-year-old girl and you like Star Wars, that's fine. Ship them. But if you're like me, I say anybody over 25, you should never, never ever say Raylo. You should never ship somebody. If you want to talk about somebody being romantic with another person, say Han and Leia. All through the 90s, I never called them Lehan. Lehan or Han Leia. What, I don't even know how to ship. So please, can we just stop talking like 13 year old girls? What's another thing I really, really, really hate as part of the Star Wars Phantom? I, I, I can't even talk about this one. I hate it so much. Here you go. Now let's move on from that before I get hate. Another one is a way somebody says something and maybe I was saying it wrong. But I saw this at all the time when Han Solo movie was about to come out. Solo? Or not so Solo? Solo? Or something like that? I didn't know what this meant. I had to go over to Jeremy, my friend over at Geeks and Gamers. Really good guy hates everything Star Wars, I think. At least everything new Star Wars. So we Twitter war about that. Ugh, did I just say Twitter war? I hate myself sometimes. Anyway, you know, we debate that, uh, The Last Jedi. But I didn't know what a soy, I don't know what Han Soy, Soy was. I didn't know, I had to look it up. Apparently it's somebody that likes soy milk and they're kind of like, you know, kind of, mm, don't really know how to say this while upsetting some of the people like, but you know, it's kind of like a boy that likes soy milk and he's kind of maybe... Not that there's anything wrong with that. And apparently, I don't know why they attach this to Han Solo. I mean, Han Solo's a badass, I don't understand. But I just hated hearing the words. It drove me crazy just seeing it on my Twitter. So please, never call anybody. So please stop it, stop saying soy, soy solo. <laughs> This is really hurting my knees. Why did I decide to do a video like this? That's gotta hurt! <laughs> it's gotta hurt! <laughs> I 
Okay, another thing I hate, mid-credit scenes. <sighs> okay, Marvel's really the one to blame for this. And when it started out, this extra little scene was after the end of the credits. But they've gone crazy with it. Now you have a scene in the mid-credits, a scene at the end of the credits. <sighs> you have it everywhere. In the movie you go off, before you can even get up off your seat, there's a new scene. 30 seconds later, there's a scene. They might throw another one here and there. Again, at the start of this, when Marvel started doing it, at the end of the credits, it was kind of a little neat thing. And you know, this goes back to like the 80s and stuff when Ferris Bueller did it. But the movie studios has gotten carried away with it. Every movie now has to have not just seen at the end of the credits, but in the middle of it. Come on. Can't we at least get back to doing bloopers like the Cannonball Run movies did? I hate mid-credit scenes, and I hate the worst is having to find out, can I leave during the movie, or do I got to sit here and wait to see if there's a credit scene? And then you wait, and there's not shit there. You wasted 10 minutes waiting for a scene that never happens, and then if it does happen in the mid-credits or then, I don't even know what they're talking about half the time. Still here? It's over. Go home. Number six, I think. Here's another one I really hate. Doesn't really apply for Star Wars. Not yet, hopefully. Red conning sequels. This is like the rage now. Let's say you take, well, I know Terminator, there's a new Terminator movie coming out, and Terminator, whatever the new Terminator is going to be called, takes place after Terminator 2, where they're just going to completely forget all about Terminator 3, although it wasn't that good, Terminator, that Salvation, Genesis, they're going to like none of that happen. Now, there's a new Halloween movie coming out, which is some reason just called Halloween, but it's the third part of Halloween 1 and 2, but it's not Halloween 3. And they're going to forget all about Halloween. Well, Halloween 3 didn't even have anything to do with Halloween. Um, but they're going to forget, you know, 4, 5, and 6. They're going to forget the H2O and Jamie Lee Curtis. And I think the H2O one, I think the H2O one's already Red Con 4, 5, and 6. <sighs> to me, it's just a cheat. It's saying, hey, we made a mistake or we're going to start over. If you could just start over every time you want to do a movie... It just takes the fun out of it. It takes the, you know, there's there's no good storyline. It means nothing if you can just say, well, that didn't happen. But we know it happened. We saw it happen. I know there's a ha I know there's a Terminator 3. You can't just act like it didn't happen. Terminator, I might give a little bit of pass to because you're playing with a timeline there and traveling back in time. So they could play around with that and saying, hey, now 3, 4, and all them did happen in an alternative timeline. And maybe something goes back that takes place between two and three and it kind of changes it where three doesn't happen. I get that, but like Halloween and some of these other movies, uh, you just can't just say, oh, that didn't happen. Let's just act like the third one didn't happen. That happened. I watched it happen. I saw it happen. Don't tell me it didn't happen. Okay, number five, here's one I really don't know about. I don't really see it that much. When I used to go to Dragon Con every year in Atlanta, I would see it um, everywhere I went, about every, you know, there'd be thousands of people there and probably 30 of them had this, and I hated it. The Firefly hat. That's the most stupidest looking thing I've ever seen. It's, I, just, I couldn't stand it. I don't even know what it's called. I tried to watch Firefly. I'll be honest with you, I watched one, maybe two episodes. I think I saw a train in it. I didn't know. I didn't really like it. it you know, it seemed like, it seemed like a science fiction show on the WB it, or CW. It just seemed, I just really couldn't get into it. And when I see people with those knit stocking hats on, it just drives me crazy. It might be even worse. No, no, I take that back. It can't be worse than that Shriner's hat. I don't even know where that Shriner hat comes from. But I see it all over Dragon Con and other cons I go to. People wearing Shriner hats. I don't know why Shriner hats are cool, but apparently they are. And I think, again, I said I didn't know where the Shriner hats came from, but I think they come from Doctor Who. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. Because that takes me to number four. I hate Doctor Who, and the worst thing than Doctor Who is Doctor Who fans. Sorry, this is where you click off this video and click thumbs down. I hate Doctor Who. 
Now, I've got a good friend, a good friend that's really into Doctor Who. Try to get him to watch Blake 7, and he laughs and says he's not going to watch stupid stuff, but, but he turns on Doctor Who. And why is it at every bookstore you go to, and why is it whenever I see a girl wearing a Doctor Who shirt, it's always a fat girl? Oops. Is that not PC? Do I not supposed to say that? Let's move on to the next one before you know who finds out I said something negative about somebody. Number two. This one I don't hear as much as I did uh, back during the prequel time. Um, George Lucas raped my childhood or ruined my childhood. Now, I've seen this applied to other things, not just George Lucas. I've seen it applied to other movies, but it's mostly Star Wars. But I've seen it say that Disney ruined the childhood or raped the childhood. How, no matter what Disney does with Star Wars or what George Lucas did with the prequels, it does not change how I see Star Wars. It does not change my love for Star Wars. And it really doesn't change anything at all how I grew up loving Star Wars. It does not change my childhood at all. Lucas or Disney could come out and make the worst Star Wars movie ever where they go back in time and they change to where a new hope never happens. Maybe they send troopers back and they kill Luke Skywalker. Horrible idea. They could do that. It would be awful, I'm sure. But it wouldn't change my childhood. I would still have memories of playing with these toys. I would still have memories of Star Wars. I would still have my Star Wars childhood. And you can't ruin that. You can't ruin the childhood. George Lucas raped a childhood. George Lucas raped a childhood. George Lucas raped a childhood. And the last one I'm going to talk about here is, I think we all do it, and I think I've been guilty of it myself. And that is repeating clickbait. I see it so much on Twitter. There'll be stuff. Oh, did you hear what Luke, did you hear what Mark Hamill said about the Last Jedi? He hated the Last Jedi. Well, hold on now. The clickbait says that Mark Hamill didn't like Luke Skywalker in the Last Jedi. And then when you start reading the article, you start saying, well, he said he didn't like the plans that Ryan Johnson had. But then once you read the script, he was okay with it. Nope, people just see that headline and they repeat it when you try to debate them on Twitter and stuff. They just repeat what they saw on that. There's another one of uh, Simon Pegg. Uh, big clickbait all over the internet. They, Simon Pegg says, Ryan Johnson threw out all the plans that J.J. Abrams has. And yeah, you just read the headline, you think that. And I see people tell me all the time, that's true. Then you read the article and you find out what Simon Pegg is, says. Well, I know J.J. Abrams has some plans, but he wasn't sure. We kind of, He kind of just talked it around. I don't know what happened. I don't think anybody knows. That's a lot different than saying Simon Pegg says Ryan Johnson threw out all the ideas that J.J. Abrams had. Because I've seen where Daisy Ridley has said, hey, I knew who my parents were nobody when we made The Force Awakens. That's what J.J. Abrams told me. And that's what Ryan Johnson kept. So he didn't throw out everything. And I'm not saying he didn't throw out anything. But people see these headlines, these clickbait headlines, and they just repeat it like it's true. It becomes true. Nobody wants to read the articles. Let the hate flow. Whew. What else do I hate? Ugh. You don't want to hear and hear me hate all day. I got to get back to cleaning this stuff. I've got a lot of cleaning to do. Thank you for watching. Go to Patreon support me. Thank you again for all those that have been supporting me. I got lights now. I might have a good camera soon. I won't have to use my cell phone. So thank you for watching. Go over to Patreon. Links in the description below. Head over to StarWarsJunk.net. Cool shirts. All the links to the video, everything you need to know is right there. So again, thank you for watching. Let me get back to cleaning, guys. Thank you. Oh, hey, hey, about to get across something. Oh. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>